joining us in the studio, a very special guest, and it is the new national free diving record holder, Tank Said. Thanks for joining us. First of all, mate, what's free diving? Uh, free diving is um, basically a sport where you try to swim as far as you can on one breath, and it could be either distance in a pool or depth in the ocean. And how far did you go? Uh, I swam 218 metres. Uh, yeah, two eighteen. a long way. So we're about to see some pictures of you uh, setting this new national record. As we see the pictures, just talk us through what's going through your mind and what you're doing to sort of minimise the effort that you're putting in. Sure. Um, so this is early on in my swim. I'm just thinking about my technique um, and just putting the demons at bay. You get a lot of, you can get negative thoughts coming into your head because um, it's obviously a long way. I'm under for 322. Um, so, you know, just focus on my turns, make sure I do a clean swim. There's a lot of protocol that you must adhere to. Make sure my fin doesn't break the surface, that's a penalty. Um, and then coming to the final stretch, it's just really about just conserving as much energy as I can and just staying focused and, you know, just telling myself that I can do it. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of self-doubt and uh, I rehearsed this last bit of the swim probably a hundred times. Is that um, the bit where you can find yourself in, in trouble with the, the laws sort of a thing? Yeah, exactly. Um, there's once you come up, you've got to adhere to safety protocol. Yeah. That's just to prove that you're cognitive be beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, and so you've got to remove your facial equipment, make the OK signal, and say I'm OK. If you don't do it in that specific order within 15 seconds, you get disqualified. Um, even if you were to remove that and make the signal and say I'm good, I'm fine, it's immediate disc uh, DQ. And this one was a little bit hairy. You, you... Yeah, I was. I was definitely on edge. You can see like bubbles coming out of me. Um, that's not a good sign. And there's there's a technique into how you can keep your blood pressure up to stop you from passing out at the end of the swim. And that's basically what you see me doing there. Is just is called hook breathing. And you know I've got a surface coach who just reminds me to do that stuff because people often forget to breathe when they come to the surface or you know, little things like that, so. Well, Tank, I want to take you back to, to those pictures that we were seeing there. I think we'll see them again, those pictures where you're actually coming to the surface. Yeah. Uh, it almost looks like you're actually struggling to control your movements at exactly. that point. Exactly, that's called LMC, or loss of motor control. Uh, and it's also affectionately known as a samba, because it can be like a bad dance. Um, so basically what you'll see me do is I'll come up and I'll, the first thing I'll do is I'll swim towards the edge of the pool and I'll come up and I'll wrap my arms over the pool and that's kind of like a, you know, like a boxer's hug when he's in trouble. And so I just wrap him in there and, and that little shake there is the LMC. And so often what happens is it takes a few seconds for the O2 to, to get into your bloodstream once you take a breath. And so you can have a, a couple of seconds there where it's a little hairy. How did you find your way into this sport and how did you know you were any good at it? Uh, I grew up spearfishing, so I always had a good lung capacity. Um, and then I met some of the members of the US uh, National Freediving Team, just randomly at a bar one night, and uh, I challenged one of the girls to a breath hold on, on, the, on the bar as you top, do. as you do. Yeah. And uh, I did all right, and she said, okay, you're in. And I started training with her, and you know, five months later, here we are, so. You mentioned that there's a six disciplines when it comes to free diving. Uh, probably, I think the general public would think that the most dangerous is the one where you're going straight down in the ocean and swimming up. There are some quite graphic images of guys blacking out five, Absolutely. ten metres from the top. How do you feel about that? Um, it's a bit of a misnomer. Um, blacking out is is a part of the sport. It doesn't happen very often. Um, that tends to be the, the footage that you see. Um, you come to the surface when you do blackout or, or someone will come up with you and it's a matter of just blowing on the person's face, saying their name and within three or four seconds they're back to it, they don't know what's happened. You know, I would say a concussion is much more severe than a blackout. Uh, there are little things that can happen, people can get a lung squeeze or they can perforate an eardrum, um, but that's usually because they've pushed themselves beyond their limit. And you know, with a perforated eardrum you're looking at three weeks out of the water. Uh, and it's a very minor injury compared to, say, other contact sports. Has anyone died? Uh, in, co in competition, no one has ever died um, in freediving. Unfortunately, there have been mishaps out of competition and that tends to be where freedivers are doing silly things, where they're training on their own. Um, you can have a blackout on the surface and you're completely fine, but if you black out underwater and you are on your own, then you're obviously going to drown. And that's... Uh, 
that's, uh, you know, really unfortunate and quite silly for anyone to be doing that, frankly. You're obviously very good at the sport, very committed to it, but what are your ambitions? Where do you go from here in a sport like this? Um, I'm looking at the World Championships next year in Belgrade. It'll be at the end of June. I'm just kind of um, trying to pick up some sponsors right now and then hopefully if that, if that works out, then I'll definitely do the World Championships and do a couple of other international events. We spoke about the World Championships there. Uh, the, the vision that we saw of you in the pool, you're on your own, basically uh, racing the clock and, and trying to swim as far as you can. When you're competing against other people, I mean, are you side by side? Who can go the furthest? Or is it, a, or is it again, a single event? Yeah, it, it depends on the competition. Uh, I believe in the Worlds, they'll have several swimmers swimming at once and then you'll have heats. Um, and then if you qualify into the final round, then they will have, um, I think it's maybe seven or eight um, swimming in a heat. But w with each diver in the water, you also have two safety divers who swim right beside you. So just in case you do get in trouble, then they pick you up. But I think that's probably more about time because there are so many athletes. It's really hard to just go one at a time. You be there all day. And Tank, this is very different to your day job. You're actually an actor by trade with a pretty handy CV as well. Uh, yeah, I, um, I live between here and Los Angeles. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's a, great, it's a great profession where you can dedicate a lot of time to free diving. Um, Especially if you're out of work, you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately that does happen from time to time. Um, and, you know, it's about maximising that time into doing stuff that you love. And so free diving is a real passion of mine and it's a great sport and it's a great community of people, so... Does the acting help you when it comes to getting sponsors and people on board? Uh, yeah, it does actually. Um, I've got you know quite a following in terms of social media, and um, I have a real online presence. And you know, it's a, it's an attractive prospect to companies who you know want to diversify the market that they're looking at. Um, I'm sure, you've at least started scripting a feature about free diving, starring yourself. Surely. Uh, no, I haven't. But I think they are doing a movie with. Um, well, you're in. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Oh. Nothing's a done deal until it's a done deal. You're talking about uh, divers that go alongside. Every sport has a groupie or a group or a group of groupies. What type of groupies does free, drive, free diving attract? Um, Be honest. Um, <laughs> mate, you stumped me on my first question. <laughs> people with oxygen tanks, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think people, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting sport because it's considered an extreme sport in terms of what can happen, but it's also a very meditative sport. We do a lot of yoga, a lot of meditation. Um, you know, I train in a pool in LA and swimmers are constantly coming up to us and, and they want to know questions. And we actually recruit a lot of freedivers from swimming, just from, you know, I train with triathletes and stuff like that. So the majority of work I do is technique. So it's, you know, kickboard work and that sort of thing. Um, but it's not bad on the ladies, I've got to admit. In a pub, Australian national record holder. Yeah, hold my breath for 6.40, you know. Andy. It's Andy, it works. The it girls works. might like it, but what about your parents when, when they look at that sort of a video and see you struggling when you come up, what do they think about that? Yeah, mum's a bit, mum's a bit concerned. Um, Dad's okay, you know, rough, rough as guts. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I just got to coach them through it and say it's not, it's not as bad as it looks, you know. Um, I'm in really safe hands. I trust everyone around me. I've got a great support team. I've got a great coach. Um, and you know, I know my limits, and the idea is is come up before your limit. So, you mentioned you've got a coach. Uh, is he getting paid, or is it just for, for no, the love of it? It's it's one of those great sports. Um, Wayne Judge is my coach. It's really funny because he lives in Gladstone. I train in the U.S. Um, and it's just it's skyping, it's, it's Skype facebooking, yeah. and it's um, me uploading videos, him looking at it, you know, correcting my technique. And then me going back in the pool and then working off that. So a lot of people work internationally with coaches just because, you know, Wayne's, Wayne's one of the best in the country. So, you know, that's, it's great to work with him. Aside from just doing the laps of the pool underwater for training, do you, do you, have, do you go running and, and do other bits and pieces? That uh, are... I do a lot of cardio early on in the season. Yeah. Um, and then I drop all cardio and all weight training about a month out. And that's because I want to... Um, lower my metabolic rate. I don't want to burn O2 efficiently. I want to slow that down as much as possible. I want to maximize flexibility because it's about getting as hydrodynamic as possible. And as you guys know, when you do weight training, you tend to be more restrictive. Um, I do a lot of CO2 tolerance work. So that just means a lot of interval training on minimal breathing in between. Um, and that's about it. Between that, the yoga and the, and the, the meditation stuff, which is really key, I'd say, 50% of freediving is about meditation and about you cannot go into the sport with any adrenaline, you know, no nerves, none of that stuff. You want to be as calm and as relaxed as possible. So, 
All right, Tank, the World Championships next year uh, beckon for you. Best of luck and uh, do us proud back in Australia. I'll try my best, mate.